Hi, it's David C. Jones, and welcome to Before the Curtain Goes Up. And this curtain has been going up very, very, very slowly because this play has been almost done for almost four years now, five years now. Uh, the Wrong Bashir is finally ready to arrive in Vancouver. And I have the director, the writer, and two of the actors here. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Now, uh, Zahida, uh, you, you uh, did I say that right, Zahida? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, you you wrote this show. What what? First off, tell us what the show is about. What is this? What's going on? Sure. Uh, so the show is a mistaken identity comedy about the Smiley community, which is a small uh, a community, a Shia community in uh, Canada. And uh, basically, um, a, a guy named Bashir is accidentally selected for a really important religious position uh, before he gets a chance to argue. His parents have, of course, said yes. Um, the people that have selected him show up at his house um, and they slowly realize as they talk to him that they have completely the wrong guy. But then before anything can really get sorted, his grandparents show up as, as they're really excited enough. They've, they've caught wind of this in the Ismaili Jamaat Kanar Mosque. And as the play goes on, it just gets, um, everyone has to keep the farce up and it gets harder and harder <laughs> until, um, yeah, Bashir kind of really realizes as the play goes on what it would mean to his family. Okay, so it gets compounded as more as the stakes get higher, as more and more people arrive. How wonderful. Uh, now, Daniela, you are wonderful. Oh, oh, I'm echoing. Oh, Parm, you've done, you've done something. We, we have Parm here as well, but somehow we're creating an echo loop back. Parm, do you want to maybe mute your mic? So you, I think that might help. Thank you. There we go. Okay. Now, Daniela, you uh, look at you being a director. <laughs> Always in director mode, I guess. <laughs> uh, Daniela, uh, how do you, how do you, uh, aside from casting, because you obviously had to find the brilliant cast, right? 90% of her, her, her show is casting, right? You're picking the right people. But what, what's been the, the funnest part about directing this piece? Um, well, we just started rehearsals this week. <laughs> so you don't know yet? <laughs> so I don't know yet. Um, but I, I will say uh, some of the things we were sharing yesterday, I asked uh, around the table what, what folks were most excited about. Um, and a lot of us have never been in an all brown cast, including myself. So it's just so exciting to um, look at all these headshots and see all these South Asian actors um, be, you know, in a nine person cast, that's really, really hard to produce. And so the fact that there's nine of them and they're all from different generations. Um, and yeah, I think we're just really, really excited for what this is going to mean for the community. How wonderful. Now, uh, now I'm wondering, you made me think lately in Vancouver, there has been this sort of, um, uh, uh, inclusiveness happening on stage and also with languages, uh, 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 Christine Quintana's play had the subtitles that were both in Spanish and in English. So yeah, I going back and forth. <laughs> oh, you did? Oh, it was so good. You, of course you did. Of course you did. It was. <laughs> but then there's been other shows that have just gone. Nope, no subtitles. If you don't know what they're saying, you're gonna have to figure it out. Is there language in this one, or are they all? Uh, are they all? speaking English or do they, uh, what's yeah. going on, Daniela? It's true. Well, that's part of the, um, the importance of producing plays like this. And it's tricky for playwrights to know what call to make for a majority speaking English speaking audience. Um, but I think Sahid has done a really good job of um, doing a little bit of both. It will be predominantly in English, but a lot of the characters who are of an older generation um, will go back and forth between English and Kachi. And um, yeah, language is actually one of the um, small thematic uh, through lines in the play um, that is tied to a, a bigger, um, yeah, a, a bigger issue in loss of um, culture and community that the play also speaks to. Wow, and can I just say again, I apologize for not remembering. That's I okay. love that I, show. Yeah, I co-directed it with my with my partner, Chelsea, but I'm glad oh, that you loved it, yeah. I loved it so much. Sabrina, who are you? What's going on? Why are you here? <laughs> yes, so I'm playing Nafisa, the younger sister of Bashir. Nice, so are you, um, 
uh, uh, is your character finding bemusement in this, or or are they the first to figure out what's going on? What's going on with it? or what can you say? I think it's a comb combination of bemusement and also just like, oh my gosh, is this really happening? Like the kind of the shock of it all. Um, I I love the way Zahida's written it, where it's just there's so many elements in there where it's there's, there's so many surprises that come in that it's just like whoa. <laughs> So um, I think that's a fun part about playing the piece that she's kind of responding to all this in her environment as the youngest. So, so do you become kind of like the audience's surrogate a little bit? Like, like when you're responding, like and Danielle's going, yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it also depends on like who, it can also depend on like who you relate to as well in the play, right? I and mean, there's so many different characters in this play that I'm sure there's, different ways in which audience members will be like oh that reminds me of me like when or that reminds me of my nanny or my grandmother you know so um, that's going to be exciting to kind of play out discover that yeah now has everyone so this this is a, a, a comedy primarily a comedy but it's got themes in it uh that that are maybe a, a meaty uh so have, has everyone involved, I think Parm has, although we'll never hear from Parm, um, uh, has everyone done comedy before? I think, Parm, do you want to try to see if, if you unmute, if we can hear you? How's that? Yes? It, it sounds good. We can hear you. I uh, think you can, you can speak to that for sure. Sure. Yeah, I've done comedy before. I actually, many, many years ago when I was starting in theater and I wasn't getting work, uh, I wanted to get some love from the audience. So I went up to do a, a amateur night on uh, stand up. And uh, what? long story short, I ended up, uh, well, I was told to enter a, a, com a comedy contest called The Funniest New Comic in Canada, came in second. And I started making a living as a stand up comic. So I actually done comedy, uh, I did that for about three years. Um, when I transitioned to TV and film, nobody looked at me and said, oh, that guy looks funny. So I never got any comedy roles, you know. And so it was great to be come back to the theater. And uh, the last piece I did was, was kind of serious. And this one is on the other spectrum. My character is Mansoor, who is one of the uh, community sort of religious leaders, um, council members. And uh, him and his partner, his boss, Al Nashir, are well-respected religious leaders that everybody kind of looks up to and tries to be proper with and not offend, which sets up the comedy because we're kind of, you know, we're kind of goofy, you know, not that sort of well-organized. And my character especially is um, is a, 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 a bit of a bumbling goofball, uh, which is so much fun to play. Nice, nice. Now, yeah. Uh, wonderful. Now, are you giving, uh, uh, well, Sabrina, have you done comedy before? Yeah, a, a bit. I would say um, uh, four to five years. I'm trying to think pandemic years. I'm like, what? <laughs> how many years have passed? Um, yeah, I, I did a little bit with children's theater uh, five years ago. Um, the, it, I actually was in the same play as Parm a few months ago, 90 Days um, in September. So that was more dramatic. So yeah, it's definitely shifting into a different side of things where it's a bit more comedic. So uh, way more <laughs> comedic so it's uh it's really interesting to switch back and forth and both those plays are about our are about our cultural community so it's really interesting to to kind of jump like that nice now Zahir what inspired you to write this uh what because like, okay we've, we've done a mistake in identity we said before we started rolling the cameras it's sort of like French farce with doors slamming and people running in and out of rooms and stuff like that uh, in, the, in the Fado style of Lee in her ear um uh what made you go I want to do is uh am I saying the word right Ishmaeli uh uh comedy I want to do something that's going to make people laugh what what was the impetus for this I think there's a lot of humor in the Ismaili community, so it's not hard to to really, you know, write a comedy about it. So that was one of the things that really excited me about it. There's so many, and I was happy that, you know, I wrote the play kind of thinking that the inside jokes would be funny for an Ismaili audience, but I've been really happy that uh, wider audiences have also been laughing and getting the humor and um, the really specific jokes. 
Um, so yeah, so that that really excited me about writing the comedy. And then I guess just growing up in the Ismaili community and being from the generation that was born here, um, seeing kind of the differences with the way my grandparents were, they're really heavily embedded in the community, hearing overhearing conversations with my parents and their friends about growing up in Kampala and flying kites over the hill and and things like that. I just um I really grew up with that. And so this play was kind of a way to to make sense of a lot of those intergenerational differences and changes through comedy. Nice. Now, and Daniela, with that, with, with, the, with the comedy, how are you approaching this as a director? You're only one week into rehearsal, so you're still exploring the text. Are you, are you like leaning into the drama first and then going, okay, now let's lighten it up? Or are you going, let's find all the funny in here. Let's, <laughs> let's find some pratfalls and some slapstick as well. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think, you know, we're just beginning to to get into the um, character analysis, what is my objective, all those things, understanding the rhythm of the text. Um, Sahida has a lot of overlapping dialogue, uh, characters speaking at the same time, lots of improvised ad lib, but I have such a fantastic cast. And so I think we're just going to spend the first week focusing on getting the rhythm of the text and the dialogue right and then we can get on our feet and figure out the logistics of all those running around entrances and exits with food and no food and tea and um all the things that need need to happen so yeah nice and you could come up with those like almost fumbles and stuff like that i i teach comedy at the vancouver film school so we talk about uh stuff from scott sadita's book about here's where you can these are the things that the writer has given you. Oh, I've frozen. Uh, I hope I unfreeze soon. Uh, then, uh, uh, and here are the things that, that can be imposed within yes. the script. Exactly, yeah. Parm, I know, already has all these ideas of um, physical comedy that he that I'm sure he's going to offer me, and I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled about it. So I look forward to discovering those moments as well. Nice, OK. Um, uh let me just uh, we'll go down the line uh in what i can see is sabrina sahida daniela and parm uh you're each going to sell the audience you're going to look right at the camera and you're going to sell this show okay so sabrina you're up first how would you uh well this show is about a family and it's hilarious um as well i encourage everybody from any community to come watch and uh as well for members of the Ismaili community, this show's about you. So come see it because it's it's so funny and it's really relatable. I think from any community, you would find it really relatable. You're able to pinpoint certain family members that you're like, yep, that's in my family. Yep, that's in my family. So definitely come watch. It's so worth it. Nice. So, Ida, you're up. How would you sell this show to the people? Uh, no, yesterday I was in rehearsal for the first day. It was our first day of rehearsal, and I'm just so excited about the cast, about Daniela, about you know it going on at speed. And after working on this play for for so long, I'm just um, I'm really excited now to be on the on the other end and and to be seeing what they're doing with it in rehearsal is really exciting. And you should come and see that with me because <laughs> yeah. I'm also gonna. <laughs> going to be coming on on opening. <laughs> yeah, I, and before we get to Danielle and Palm, we should point out, I sort of said that in my opening, but we didn't really talk about that. You've had this show yanked out from under you, Zahida, so many times, because it was, you said 2017 was when it was being workshopped? Yes, yeah. And then you were shopping it, like, tell me the, just really quickly, then we'll get to Danielle and Palm, because uh, I, I totally remiss on talking about this. Uh, what was what was this painful journey? This was oh, yeah. so upsetting. Yeah, no, it's been quite a long journey. I mean, uh, as Daniela mentioned, a, a cast, it's a large cast, and I started writing it in in 2017. It's switched many different hands and had many different readings. Um, it was scheduled to be produced in in 2019. Uh, it was. Um, they said, okay, we're going to produce it in 2021. And then the pandemic, uh, this was backed, uh, and then the pandemic ended up uh, having the project shelved. And actually, I, I had shared with the cast that after that, I had kind of given up hope on getting it produced because it's such a, it's a big play. And I had spent a lot of time already, you know, trying many years, trying to 
and I was losing, you know, yeah, losing hope. And, um, and then I submitted it to Touchstone and Daniela, and then I heard back from her. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was quite surprised when, when that happened. And I'm just, I'm actually, you know, has ever, sometimes people say that things work out for the better. And that's kind of been the case with the play because um, over the last year, I've been working on it with Touchstone and with Daniela and, uh, as a new play development director, I feel like she's pushed it into directions that I never really thought before. And and the time with her and with Touchstone and working on it has really helped. And so it did work out for the better. Wow. I, I can't imagine going through that where it's like, we're going to do it. <laughs> I mean, everyone was affected by the pandemic, but for a, a creative who was like, I put, poured all my heart into this for you know, very little money and now it's going to come to fruition and then telling it not must have been like, no wonder you were like, screw it, I'll write something else. <laughs> right. uh, and I'm so, yay, it's back. Daniela, sell this show. Well, I feel like in uh, a time that we've had in this world where everything um, still feels heavy and sad, everybody needs a good feel good family comedy um with nine maybe ten south asian actors on stage <laughs> so please come support this incredible play if you're in the mood to have a good time to have a good laugh it's a multi-generational play there are actors you know from all generations there's something for everyone um yeah it's a celebration of people of color so please come it's going to be such a fun night nice and parm because we can't see you i'm going to try to lip sync your answer on how to uh, why they should see this show okay you still there parm parm are you there do you want to unmute yeah unmute? okay you guys you can't sell, see me? You, you sell this show parm you sell it to the people and i'm going to lip sync you can you not see me? We cannot see you. No, so what happens is oh, it's dark. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. I know. Uh, you're just a, a, so what happens is because the screen's jumping back and forth. When yeah. you're talking, it's just me on the screen. <laughs> oh. All right. So I'll make, I'll make this uh, public service announcement. Yeah. So I'd like to direct this uh, to can, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, OK. I, I think I get what's going on here. All right. So I'd like to direct this to those of you who like to laugh. And I know there are some of you that do like to laugh. You people are the ones who should go see the show. And if there are any people out there who have a bit of a weird family, you should go see the show. And if there's anybody out there who's never, ever been to the theater, this is the reason you should go to the theater for the first time. Nice. I don't know. How did I do well something? Done, today? You did really well. You did great. You did so good. That's amazing. <laughs> so, so far, my was lip syncing you the whole time. Uh, well, thank oh. you. <laughs> thank you guys so much for taking time out of your rehearsal schedule. Get back into that rehearsal hall. You got a comedy to make. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you so David. much. Thanks. Thanks, David.